Hi, can't believe it's already week four of Recycle Journal Pages. I'm Pam Carricker, and this week we're going to finish off our Recycle Journal page by repurposing our page and giving it a new voice and a new direction and a totally different feel than the pages that we used to create this page. Let's get going and we'll finish up this page and you'll have a fabulous new start to a new artist journal. Before I show you the supplies for the next step, I wanted to just show you that I had added um, the words that I saved that I didn't add right at the beginning. Um, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to write those words in on this step or add them as collage. And I went ahead and just added them back in as a collage element right on top of what I already did and I let that dry. And now we're ready to go on to the final step which is going to be adding some doodling and drawn elements and um, more writing as desired to the final page to give it its its re repurpose and make this a completely new page out of the old pages that we started with. So what I have are a variety of pens. I like to use uh, paint pens because they write really well over the top of the oil pastel and everything and they um, sometimes if you use certain pens over the gesso and the oil pastels it can dry the pens out a little bit so paint pens are a real good option for this and there's several different kinds um, and several different thicknesses some of them are like a big chisel edge and some of them are a finer um, finer point and so you can, there's lots of options with the paint pens and then I also like a good white gel pen these right over the top you can write um, actually do handwriting and, and things just like with a regular pen but in white and then I like to have a black pen of some sort too so gather together some journaling pens that you like in colors that you might want to use on your page and then we're going to go ahead and give this page some pop with some journaling and some doodling. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is um, I know that I want these stripes to be black again so I'm going to add some black back into the page and by adding the black down here then once I do that I can decide where else around the page the black will need to be added back. This will be a bold thing compared to what it looks like now because right now it's kind of gray and washed out and it looks nice but I want to get a bolder look so I'm going to go totally black with the stripes and using the paint pens is a real easy 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 way to add elements painted elements to your page and to continue the black around the page um, I decided to go ahead and outline the letters that are um, over here on these little pieces of collage text with a black pen. And this will kind of pop those out and give them more of a, a handwritten look as well. So it's really at this point just a matter of looking around your page and doodling just like you like you would if you were a kid doodling on your school paper instead of doing your homework. It's a fun part of journaling and it's one that you can do while you're watching TV or you can take it with you at this point and work on it in another area of your home or if you're traveling. and you just keep playing back and forth. One thing I would suggest though is if you introduce a new color like I introduced the black then use it in more than one um, spot on your page unless you're going for like a real um, pop of color like if you wanted to introduce a word in red and have that be the, just the power thing on your page that grabs your attention then you, you, know, then you could do that of course but um, because I have the black there I want to introduce it a few other places and another thing that I think I want to do is add um, 
add some black up here just in the form of some little seed type um, dots on this little flower and then I'm going to have those trail down. Like so. Just to help tie the black elements together. It's just a subtle little detail. And they get further apart as they go down the page. And closer together as they're up by the by the flower. And that helps take the black up. And then I may want to add some black detail up here as well. I think I'll add a little bit of a checkerboard. This is kind of where you get a little crazy. You just you just start looking around the page and you say, ooh, I could add this there, I could add that there. I like to add like you know like white back in just little bits and you can use these paint pens in, in a painterly way to almost like like um, a brush stroke if you let them dry just to you know let them not be mushy then you can add some strokes of white back in that look like you added them with a brush I'll add a hint of white to her lovely little wing here. That gives a little bit of nice touch to her wing. And I'm going to add some white highlights to her face with the pen while I have it out too. And to the heart. So look around your page and just continue, you know, just keep on adding some doodles. Make sure um, if you're using a pen to add some final details that you don't use a pen that's a non-paint pen over the top of a painted area that's still wet. Make sure you let those dry really well because you'll ruin your okay. pen. I'm going to take um, my graphite pencil and kind of go around these little word boxes here just for a little added interest. I decided to use my white pen on the black as well to kind of tone down the black. I liked the, the pop of the bold black there, but I also wanted to tone it back down a bit so it wasn't too loud against the softness of the rest of the page. So to do that, I used the white pen and added additional white journaling on top of that black, and that kind of took care of that that for me. And then I like to just take the white pen and go around different spots. Um, that little pop of white adds a lot of you know interest with just a very simple simple element and um, but it does you know create some interest on the page and it helps pop things out and it writes pretty well over the oil pastel and the gesso. And remember we had the white we started with the white we did the whitewash so by adding the white back in and reusing it again, it brings that layer back out to the front a little bit. And that's always a good thing to do too. If you, you know, take something and use it, then you kind of reuse it another, another way. It's also fun to go around parts of these little dots to help pop the little highlighted side out of them. 
So you can see doodling is, is a lot of fun and you can just, you know, it's, it's playtime. You get your doodle things out and, and start working on your page. That's just pure fun and enjoyment and playtime. Time to relax and unwind and finish off a great looking journal page made completely with your own artwork or at least um, with you know things from your own home no no uh, you know pre-purchased collage sheets and things like that we're making these from things that we're recycling either our own art or our own ephemera found around the house and that looks pretty cool so I think we're just about done here. I'm liking the way that she's looking and I like the the little bits of white are looking good to me. That adds, adds a little bit to her and I like it. Okay. I think we're getting close to being done. And one last little thing I didn't add the stem for my flower and I think it will go perfectly through the little words here connecting them all together. I like that. Sometimes things just work out great. Okay, so that I think is it. That concludes our workshop on how to recycle journal pages. So I hope you had fun. I had a great time showing you one of my techniques for journaling and I hope this sparks some ideas and some interest in art journaling for you. Have fun with this pro uh, project and I'll hope to see you again. Thank you.